California is still under lockdown, with many indoor restaurants and even churches closed until further notice. On the bright side, the beaches are open, and in many ways, being out in nature can be a good substitute for a church, especially relaxing by myself near the ocean in that it allows me to be in a peaceful state of mind and to reflect on spiritual matters, or in my case today, to contemplate ancient history. I received a lot of questions recently about an early Christian sect known as the Essenes, so I figured that would make for an interesting topic for an episode. When we look at the early roots of Christianity and the time just before Jesus, around the 2nd century BC to 1st century BC, which falls during what's known as the Second Temple Period, we come across three Jewish sects that flourished and existed in relatively large numbers at that time. The Sadducees, the Pharisees, and the Essenes. The primary sources from which knowledge of these sects comes down to us are from Josephus, a Jewish historian born in Jerusalem in the first century, to a father of priestly descent and a mother who claimed royal ancestry, Philo of Alexandria, Egypt. He was a Hellenistic Jewish philosopher. And when I say Hellenistic, that means between the time of the death of Alexander the Great in 323 BC and until the defeat of Cleopatra and Mark Antony by Octavian in 31 BC. I've included a link in the description to a video that explains what the Hellenes means. And Pliny the Elder, a commander in the Roman Empire, he was also a philosopher and author, and basically wrote what became the model for encyclopedias. Now, the Sadducees didn't believe in spirits, mysticism, or an oral tradition, emphasizing acceptance of the written law alone, which in its depiction of the priesthood corroborated their power and enforced the hegemony of the Sadducees in Judean society. Oral tradition is another way of saying Kabbalah, which were teachings that were passed down orally from at least the time of Moses and were used to unlock the symbolic hidden meaning of the written teachings, which for Jews is called Torah, and for Christians is the Old Testament part of the Bible. So the Sadducees were mainly comprised of aristocratic families, merchants, high priests, and mainly those with money. They observed and promoted literal written law and had the most conservative views and for the most part got along with the Roman rulers of Palestine. Their high social status was reinforced by their priestly responsibilities, which included performing sacrifices at the temple, the primary method of worship in ancient Israel. According to Josephus, the Sadducees believed that there's no such thing as fate, man has free will, the soul is not immortal, there's no afterlife, they rejected the concept of angels or spirits and believed that there were no rewards or penalties after death. The priesthood often represented the highest class in Judean society, but not all priests and aristocrats were Sadducees. Many were Pharisees. The Pharisees and the Sadducees are historically seen as antithesis of one another. The Sadducees rejected the Pharisees' use of oral law to enforce their claims to power, citing the written Torah as the sole manifestation of divinity. Another conflict was cultural between the Sadducees who favored Hellenization, meaning the Macedonian or Greek influence, and the Pharisees who resisted it. They also disagreed on certain rites and services, religious laws, and religious interpretations. For example, the Sadducees did not believe in resurrection of the dead. Now, this topic of resurrection is controversial, and there are literal interpretations, and then there are esoteric symbolic ones which do not concern the reanimation of a dead body, but instead 
apply to a soul which has symbolically fallen, being rehabilitated and having a spiritual rebirth. So one sect went by a literal interpretation and another utilized an unwritten oral tradition similar to what is passed down in secret societies today to find a deeper meaning in the written text. The word Pharisees means to set apart or separate, and they were said to have originally emerged out of a group of scribes and sages. They resisted assimilation and wanted Jews to remain apart. Josephus claimed that Pharisees received the full support and goodwill of the common people, which was often in contrast to the more upper-class Sadducees who are like who we refer to as the elite in our modern times. That said, there have been references made in the New Testament or Christian Bible that pointed to conflicts between Jesus and the Pharisees, which has led many to speculate as to whether Jesus himself belonged to the third sect, which was called the Essenes. To give some context, modern mainstream Jews, for the most part, perceive a direct link to the Pharisees, or the sages of the Talmud, which contains the teachings and opinions of thousands of rabbis, and most historians agree and consider them as the progenitor to rabbinical Judaism. The Essenes were fewer in number than either of the other sects, and were different in a number of ways. They lived a communal life, meaning they shared everything, and were dedicated to voluntary poverty. They lived without money. They also rejected slavery as unjust. Their lifestyle was characterized by the abstinence from sensual pleasures or male climax for the purpose of pursuing spiritual goals. This means the renunciation of material possessions and overt physical pleasures and rejecting various types of hedonism and practicing a certain type of celibacy which involved secret practices that they guarded. Celibacy is defined as the state of voluntarily being unmarried, sexually abstinent, or both, for religious reasons. Based on my formal understanding of secret societies, I'd like to propose that the Essenes did in fact engage in what some refer to as sacred sex, which places an emphasis on avoiding the standard method of climax common in the procreation process. For those unfamiliar with this concept, you can research Tantra or look at some of the links in the description where I discuss this further. As this understanding is fundamental to all secret societies, all forms of Gnosis, and the Essenes, according to what I've seen in the Dead Sea Scrolls, were definitely a Gnostic sect. To quote internal alchemist and author Samuel Ein Wyor, quote, the philosophy of sexual alchemy has its principles in the school of the Essenes, in the school of Alexandria, in the teachings of Pythagoras, in the mysteries of Egypt, Troy, Rome, Carthage, Eleusius, as well as in the wisdom of the Aztecs and Maya, etc. The system of teaching which was adopted by Jesus was the system of the Essenes. Certainly the Essenes were 100% Gnostics. These were the rituals of the Christians that met in the catacombs of Rome during the time of Caesar Nero. 
These were the rituals of the Essenes, a humble caste of great initiates to which Jesus the Christ belonged. Edgar Cayce also believed Jesus was an Essene, as do a number of other scholars. Some claim Jesus was a Nazarite. The word itself means one who lives apart, or one who has made a vow of abstinence. Nazarites were restricted from drinking wine or anything made from grapes, could not touch a dead carcass, and they were not allowed to cut their hair, which is symbolic of a vow of celibacy, like Samson, who was probably the most famous Nazarite who I already covered in a prior video. So based on their behavior, I can say with certainty that Nazarites were a Gnostic group. So while some say that Jesus the Nazarene has to do with a geographic location, as in a town called Nazareth, there are historians who claim that a town by that name did not exist in Galilee at that time and that the name was indicative of Jesus being a member of a secret sect or order that existed in northern Palestine for centuries. Could it be that the Essenes and Nazarenes were actually one and the same? I respect anyone's right to agree or disagree with either interpretation. I understand this is controversial for some people. I just feel some of this material that is kept secret within mystery schools should be made publicly available to all, so I'll leave it up to the viewer to decide. That said, I'd like to discuss some of the ancient religious manuscripts that were found in the Qumran caves in the desert in 1946 on the northern shore of the Dead Sea in the West Bank. Despite being discovered in the 40s, they were withheld and the data contained within was not made public for several decades after they were found. The Dead Sea Scrolls date to at least the 3rd centuries BC and include some of the oldest surviving works later included in the Hebrew Bible. Certain passages of some of the scrolls give indications of what some biblical scholars and occultists had thought even before the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls, that Jesus and also John the Baptist were Essenes. Some of the parables Jesus used are very similar to those in the scrolls. A scene initiation took at least one year, but up to three years in total. They held all property in common and ate together. They took strict vows of secrecy, especially concerning some of their secret Gnostic rituals, which are still practiced today in certain esoteric orders. It's interesting to note the similarities between the Essenes and Freemasons in that women are not admitted into the inner workings, they use certain signs of recognition, and their rituals were followed by a meal in common. They also share certain symbols. Symbols and ritual mean something, and their meanings have been ingrained into the subconsciousness of man for thousands of years. Carl Jung called these archetypes. Careful contemplation of these symbols according to occultists and students of mysticism, can aid in the development of wisdom, understanding, and even mental powers. The development of spiritual and mental powers by the ancient esoteric societies, such as the Essenes, is, some believe, one of the main reasons such communities and sects met or even lived in secret. If their ceremonies and teachings had been freely given out, they not only would have set themselves up for ridicule, but they would have risked the dangerous misuse of their special knowledge by the unenlightened. This is the main reason that an initiation system was created, placing candidates into levels or degrees of instruction and testing them as they advance on a gradient to higher grades of knowledge and abilities. It should also be said that since many of the rituals involve a carnal nature, which I can't describe in detail on this platform, they would also risk punishment or death if it was not done in secret. One example of this happening to a sect was with the Knights Templar, who were tortured and put to death 
for allegedly engaging in magic and unlawful sex rituals. The Templars, also known as the Poor Fellow Soldiers of Christ, also shared all their belongings in a communal way, like the Essenes, and were not really poor as an organization, and were actually quite wealthy, but were called poor, like the Essenes, because they gave up their individual possessions. They would meet in secret, in underground caves, and perform the same type of rituals performed by the Essenes, which were also practiced long before them, such as in ancient Babylon, ancient India, ancient Tibet, and ancient Egypt. It is well known in most occult circles that the archetype of Jesus Christ, the dead and risen God, which is symbolically portrayed in astral theology, is the same archetype as Osiris from Egypt. The Templars were said to revere Baphomet, which is sometimes portrayed as a goat with male and female attributes, which I explained in a recent video has to do with Capricorn, a sign associated with Christmas time or the winter solstice, and the resurrection of the sun, when after a period of three days, the days start becoming longer again. Many cultures have a mythological figure that represents the dying of the ego and the rebirth of a higher stage of consciousness. In the myth of Osiris, Isis gives birth to their son, the crowned and conquering child, Horus, and the key to this birth, or rebirth, is sacred sex magic. It is believed that in Egypt, sex has been used as a sacrament and religious rite for many millennia, which also includes the commingling and consumption of certain fluids. And it is the same esoteric tradition that was secretly practiced and guarded by the Essenes, like the Babylonians before them, and later Gnostic sects, such as the Templars, and then the Rosicrucians, the Freemasons, the Alchemists, and eventually secret societies, such as the OTO, whose head at one point was a cultist Alistair Crowley, who signed his name Baphomet, and once wrote, quote, Refuse the law, you put yourself beyond its pale. It is the law that Jesus Christ, or rather the Gnostic tradition of which the Christ legend is a degradation, attempted to teach, but nearly every word he said was misinterpreted and garbled by his enemies, particularly by those who called themselves his disciples. The law that Crowley alluded to, that the Templars, the Masons, the Rosicrucians, and the Alchemists all guarded, was the occult secret to true enlightenment and spiritual vitality, the Gnostic tradition of sacred ritual performed in a controlled way since ancient times, as sex is the basis of all things. The uniting of opposites is the magical secret of accessing the collective unconscious and unlocking the raw life force in nature. God and beast, lingham and yoni, good and evil, creation and destruction. My name is Robert Sepper. I'm an anthropologist. My published work is available on Amazon. My books make a great gift. If you'd like to support my work, you can do that through patreon.com. There should be a link in the description section for those that are interested. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Please hit the like button and subscribe for future updates. As always, I look forward to reading your thoughts. So please leave a comment below. Please have a wonderful week and I hope to see you again soon.